Hi, in this lesson we'll learn about the touch switch. The touch switch is very similar to a button, but except it's not an actual button. The touch switch is based on capacitive touch. So when we touch over here, it can actually recognize it and trigger an event. The touch switch is very familiar in a lot of applications that we use in the daily life. For example, coffee machines or some other vending machines that we use to press and perform an action. Now, in this SunFounder touch switch, we can see we have three pins. The first pin is SIG, which means signal. We use it to input an event. The second one is VCC for voltage and the third one is ground. We will use this touch pin to connect it to our microcontroller and perform an action when it's pressed. As we showed previously, the touch button has three pins. Signal pin, VCC pin and GT pin. The touch button, which is very similar to just a normal button, will be connected very similarly. Now, the, the signal pin will go to pin number 8, which is right here. We can actually choose any pin between number 13 to number 1. All of them are digital pins. Now for the GND, we will connect to the GND pin, which can be found right here. Here or here, both are GND pins. Now for the VCC pin, we will connect it to 3.3 volts, which is right here. Now let's take close, a close look at the pins and see that it's connected properly. We have signal pins and pin 8, we have GND pin at GND, and we have VCC pin at 3.3 volts. Now let's move to our software and see how we can get the touch button working. Now once we have connected the touch sensor into our Arduino, it's time to understand how does it work. The touch sensor switch is connected in pin 8, so we will define switch pin as GPIO number 8, which is digital pin by the way, not analog pin. Now we set the switch state as 0 by default. In the setup, we initialize it as serial begin 9600 baud rate, and we will initialize the switch pin as input. As we've discussed earlier, it's an input device, not an output device. Now in the main loop, we will set the switch state digital read switch pin. Digital read is the command to read the state from the switch pin, which we defined earlier as pin number eight. Now we will create an if statement to check if the switch state is low, it means its, its state is switched on, else it means the state is switched off. That's how it works. So, if the switch is on, we will print into the serial console that the switch is on. If the switch is off, we will print in the console that the switch is off. We've added a delay of half a second in order not to print all the time, because it's a switch, not a button. So, only if we press once and then press another time, it will change the state of the device. Now let's upload it once again to see the results and clear the output right here. Now the switch is on. We can see over here in the camera. And if we click again, now the switch is on, we can see the LED right here. Now let's press. The switch state will be off. We can see the LED, D1, the state is off. Now let's do it again. Switch is on. We can see in the serial monitor that the switch is on. And once again, touch it and D1 LED will go off, which means this switch state is off. As we've discussed previously, the touch button has three pins. One is signal, one is VCC, and one is GND. Now, because this is digital input, it's fairly easy to connect to the Raspberry Pi. First, we must go here and connect the VCC to 3.3 volt. Right here. Oops, it doesn't connect for me. Yeah just like this. Now secondly we go and connect the GND right here and thirdly we'll connect the VC, sorry the signal pin which is the pin we will use as GPIO input into GPIO number 13 which is right here. Perfect. Now when we have everything connected we can move to our software in order to detect a touch on the touch sensor and see how it works. Hi, and welcome back. Now we have the touch switch right here, connected to our Raspberry Pi. The yellow cable is the data pin that is connected to GPIO 13. We will use it as input from the touch switch to the Raspberry Pi. Then we have the VCC cable and we have the GND cable. Now let's go into our terminal and see 
how can we program it to work. Once we press the button, it will detect touch, and once we press again, it will detect release. This is switch, so it can be turned on and off, as you can see by the LED. Now, I've already made a program called switch.py, so let's use nano to edit it and see what's inside. First, we import the RPI GPIO library, and then we set the default state, which is we will set it to false. Then we have a callback function that will be called once state change in the touch switch. In this callback, we will detect if the state is zero, which we detected from the channel from the GPIO input of the button. If it's zero, it means the button is pushed and we bring button pushed. If it's one, it means the button is released. Now we will set warning to false just to ignore them in case we used some other software before that used some GPIO pins. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't affect your program or your hardware. You can skip it, but for our convenience, we will set warnings to false to ignore them. Then we set the GPIO mode to GPIO BCM because we use GPIO number 13 and we follow by the BCM format, which is easier for us. Then we set up the GPIO pin 13, which we connected the touch switch to, to GPIO both. What does it mean GPIO both? GPIO both mode means we detected both up and down. So if the button is released or if the button is pushed, we will detect it and call the callback function to do something. And of course we give the callback function, which is button callback, which is the function right here. Then we can press any button to quit the program. And finally, if any button is pressed, we will clean the GPIO and close the software. Now let's run this and see how it actually works. So here we start the program, it says press enter to quit. Let's just touch the switch first. So you remember one touch is button released and another touch is button pressed. We can see by the LED right here, the state, if it's released or pressed, one press, one release, press, release, press, release. We can see it works perfectly fine and our software works just as expected. Now finally, let's press enter to, click, to quit the software and we can see we quitted it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.